Hey everyone, welcome to my first sound design tutorial. Uh, it's kind of an addendum to the 90 second sound design um, short videos I've been doing. Um, but this one I kind of want to go a little bit more in depth with what I'm showing. So as it's appropriate, I may do more of these. Uh, I'm not going to say anything more right there, but today's video is about shepherd tones. So upon searching uh, YouTube or the rest of the internet, I was looking for different tutorials on making shepherd tones. And I wasn't quite satisfied with everything out there that I saw. So this is something that I kind of wanted to show you guys kind of an efficient way how to do it. So I have this little air compressor. Um, it just has kind of a cool, you know, motor like sound whenever it's on. So I figured that would be a good thing to use as a source. But I've experimented with shepherd tones using uh, a wide range of all kinds of different sources. And I found that um, you know, there's a lot of cool things you can kind of go with. So uh, whatever you decide to do with that uh, is pretty much up to you. You can get really creative. So here we go. All right, so here's my bike pump. And I do have a Sound Toys effects rack on here. Nothing that you need to be aware of with these particular settings. Generally though, I just recommend that if you are gonna do any processing to your source, that you would do that before you start actually making the shepherd tone. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to mute this track. Now what you'd want to do is you'd want to render um, your source down with whatever effects you have on there. So I've already gone ahead and done that. So here is my rendered with the effects. All right, sounds great. So next thing you'd want to do is I like to, before I begin creating the shepherd tone, I like to start with a seamless loop. So a seamless audio loop before I do anything else. So I'm just gonna, let's see, you grab about, I think I need 20 seconds is what I've got set up. So I'll grab 22 seconds there. Boom, cut this in half, line it up. I need to make it 20 seconds. All right, do a little crossfade in between. See how that sounds. All right, consolidate that. Move that over, see if it sounds right when it loops back around. All right, cool, we're in business. All right, so starting with that seamless audio loop is just gonna make everything easier from here on out. So just recommend that you do that. Uh, mute this one, get rid of it. Let's see what I got next. Okay, so now I'm dealing with two tracks. Okay, so now we see my two shepherd tone tracks here. And I have two groups. So the group on the left is going to be my shepherd tone that rises in pitch. And then the one on my right is going to be the one that falls in pitch. Uh, you don't have to make both, obviously, but I like to do both at the same time. That way later I've already made them and I can choose whatever one I want. So it's really just kind of a little bit more efficient uh, as far as thinking ahead. So my top track, and both of these just have the same plugin. So you're using a pitch shifter plugin so this top track is gonna go from negative 12 semitones up to zero, and then the bottom is gonna go from zero to positive 12 semitones, all right? So they're basically just an octave apart, all right? Now, the key thing here is that if we take a look at my fades, all right? So I've created a fade in on this track, gradual fade in, and then fade out on this bottom track so that when the ends, or the ends meet, should be at the exact same pitch. So essentially, if I were to take this little clip up here and pull it up next to this one, it should sound like the pitch just continues to rise. But instead, when you overlap them, you have one fading in and then one fading out. This is what's going to help you create that shepherd tone effect. All right, so this is really all you need to do. Um, it's not much more than that. Um, you know, just a couple of tips. Um, this is kind of a weird thing in Pro Tools. I don't know, derail the whole thing for this, but I do need to show you. When you create a fade in Pro Tools, um, there's not, you can see whenever I try to fade from there back, obviously it's gonna look at both the end and the start of my clip, and it's gonna just create a fade in and fade out. Um, but what you need to do is you just need to create that initial fade in, and then you have to use the trim tool to drag that the rest of the way over to get this type of fade. All right, it's kind of it's a very minor thing, um, but it can be confusing if, uh, if you've never had to actually make a fade like that before. So just wanted to clarify that. 
All right, so let's go and check on this loop here. Okay, so there's a little hang there, which you're gonna notice, but that's not really a problem at this point. So uh, if you are kind of working through this and you are auditioning it and you hear that, just don't even worry about that right now. So here's the next thing. This is where we get to have a little bit of fun, okay? Well, we're already having fun, but let's have some more fun. Okay, so what you can then do once you have your original two tracks, so these two here, once you got those two all good to go, you can now duplicate them. And you can duplicate as many pairs as you want or as many pairs as your system can handle. And then you can start processing them a little differently. So check this out. Actually, I've got uh, this pair down here. Apparently, I did this earlier so that I wouldn't have to do it live. But apparently, I put crystallizer on here and I'm doing some pitch shifting with that. So it's all this, it's, you know, it's all the same process that I just showed you. And this one down here, I've got a pair and I've added quadravox. So I'm actually making a chord out of these two. So let's see what these two sound like. All right, so that's cool. So basically you can just build this whole like kind of, you can build the tonality of it. You can build if you want it to be like chordal or dissonant or whatever, you can make this thing uh, crazy. All right, so once you're happy with your final track, which this is what we kind of got. All right, that's, that's pretty cool. All right, I don't know what I'll use it for, but I like where that's going. Um, in Pro Tools, what you can do is you can just route everything to an aux, and then I'm going to commit the aux, which would basically be like rendering the aux or recording the output of the aux. It's, it's all really the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here is the rendered output of our aux. So I'm just going to go ahead and hide all the rest of this stuff. All right, and then we're going to continue working with this. Okay, so I know these are, so I know they're 20 seconds, so I just got to, you know, get rid of all the extra space that we got when we were rendering. So this one, 20 seconds. This one also, 20 seconds. So we're good there. Okay, now here's what you got to do. All right, because if I just duplicate this, we're, we're kind of expecting this to be a loop, but you can see it still has a little hitch in there. All right, so we got to fix that. Um, so it's very easy to fix generally, uh, depending, I mean, it might be a little more difficult depending on what kind of processing you did, uh, but it should be easy to turn this back into a loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust my grid. I'm gonna make it uh, about 100 milliseconds. I'm just gonna zoom in here, grab that first 100 milliseconds, cut it, paste it at the end, and I need to yeah, probably go a little bit smaller. And let me overlap these. And I'll just do a little quick little fade here. Uh, I think that's okay. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, it sounds like it should be fine. Okay, let me duplicate it. Now let's check it out. All right, that's, that sounds pretty good to me. Um, and then, yeah, so you do the same thing with this one. Um, so I'm, well, okay, cut that, boom, paste it at the end, and, you know, pull it over, fade. Sometimes I like to adjust these and try to make it a little more even. Let's see, should be okay, let's see. No, not quite. Not quite. I think we're good, let's see. Come on, Pro Tools. Yep, I don't know if that's 100% perfect, but I can definitely live with it. So there you go. Uh, if you wanna take a quick full listen, um, you know, basically, you know, this is the end of it here, but um, let's hear what we, ended up with. All right, uh, so that's a shepherd tone. So this loop 
it's going to continue to rise in pitch and the other one will continue to fall and you know you could uh depending on what you know your project needs are you could just you know you could take this out and there's like three minutes just of that same loop uh, but that's pretty much it you know um if you have any questions you can always feel free to reach out at soundspark chase on twitter that's the best way to reach me um and i'm more than happy to answer any questions relate related to making shepherd tones or uh really anything else that you might have questions about so thank you and take care